It's so Chadam bring guys a brand new sports cards video in today's video It's actually something a little bit different I know a lot of the times on a YouTube channel You know you're gonna show the highlights show all the money made show all this But I actually have some stories to share with you guys in this video and particularly um, Some stories that obviously you know have been mistakes that have lost me a lot of money that have cost me a lot of opportunities um, and yeah, but before we get into that, I do want to highlight the positives. Um, our membership group has been absolutely killing it recently. Um, just last Sunday, we were buying these Brandon Ingram Prism Silver second years for just three to four dollars. Currently, they're up to around twenty to twenty-five dollars. This is just one of the many flips we've been having each week. Two weeks ago, we were making a killing on other players' second year cards, and this week, our membership or our report drops on Monday. So today, as this video is going up the report drops and we've been absolutely killing it if you guys would like to join the 3,000 members that are making a killing with their current investments go ahead click the link down below to sportscardsinvest.com use code YouTube to get you 10% off the yearly memberships it is $9.99 for the month or $69.99 for the year it's $99.99 or basically a hundred bucks for the premium yearly membership which gets you the reports one day early and then the deluxe which comes with two or I believe it comes with around three hundred dollars worth of consulting um that is only two hundred dollars for the full year for the deluxe membership so if you guys would like to go ahead and join all those um they are ten percent off with code YouTube if you guys would like to join the three thousand members that are making a killing in our program go ahead and click the link down below to sportscardsinvest.com but without further ado we're gonna hop right into this video so the first big mistake I personally made is as you guys can see back in October um, I bought up all these Kobe Bryant 1996 tops PSA 10s and BGS 9.5s I believe I bought two on eBay I bought around three to four on Facebook groups so I was buying them for literally six hundred dollars a piece in a PSA 10 now at that time my strategy and it still is my strategy and it's actually done me very well um, but my strategy has been to quick flip sports cards when stuff goes up don't get too attached just sell and move on and buy new stuff um, so basically what happened was I bought this for $625 took around a week to come in by the time it came in the price was up to around eight hundred and fifty dollars so i was already like wow i just made you know a quick two hundred dollars it's gone up two hundred dollars in a week and you know me i was like oh wow this is a good quick flip opportunity i can take this eight hundred fifty dollars and invest in some other players which i ended up doing i bought some jordan i bought some mitchell um but you know i sold off at eight hundred fifty dollars and literally um, a month later, this card was around $2,000, and two months, or I believe it, around June to July time, this same card was $5,000 in a PSA 10. So essentially, I cost myself around twelve to $15,000, because I had around three of the PSA 10s, and I had two BGS 9.5s in total, um, so I cost myself around $12,000 if I would waited an extra two months, um, which obviously, you know, I made some money with these flips not gonna lie um, but not close to as much as out of made holding on to this Kobe Bryant um, you know obviously my huge concern with it was you know that the population report was super high on it and I thought you know there's so many out there that prices can't really go up that high but you know I was wrong it went up to five thousand dollars um, currently they went down a little bit more but you know, at some point, buying this for $625, that was an absolute steal, um, and I'm glad I did, because I'm not going to lie, that was a very good profit, and I'm still thankful for that, um, but yeah, without further ado, we're going to hop right into our next mistake, which is actually, I believe, on this next page, Luka Doncic Rookie Cards, March 12th, 2020, um, you know, and moving on, on Facebook and stuff, I believe I bought 10 of these same ones, so in total, I had around 12 maybe 13 of these Luka Doncic PSA 10s then I bought some PSA 9s as well um so I had a bunch of these Luka Doncic's that I paid around 400 to 500 dollars for um if you guys don't remember March 12th was literally a few days 
before the pandemic hit and the NBA season shut down. So as soon as I started buying these, literally three days later, um, you know, the league was shut down. There were no more games. Um, and obviously, you know, I did make a lot of good buys, but in hindsight, everything had gone down. Um, you know, right away after buying all these cards, um, they had gone down a lot in price. Um, so basically what happened was I had all these, they went down to around $380. Um, and I was just holding on, holding on. And then I believe March, May or June came and stuff started to go back up. And this same Luka Doncic card was going for around $700. Um, I had around 10 to, as I said, around, around probably 12 to 13 of these. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and sold off all of them for $700 a piece. Um, so I got around eight to $9,000 um, for around a $5,000 investment. So not going to lie, that's a very good you know, margin. I made around $2,000 to $3,000. But if you guys don't remember, literally a month or maybe two months after I sold in August, this card was going for $2,000. Um, so I could have made $20,000 on a $5,000 investment. I made around $8,000, um, which is still very good. But that's another like $12,000 loss if I had held on. And it's not like I did much else with this money because, you know, I was reinvesting it. But I also had other money I could have spent. Um, so definitely, you know, regret selling that um, because... As you guys know, it went up $12,000 in total. Uh, my investment went up $12,000 literally a month or two after selling it. But I did do very well um, on some of these other buys. If we look back on like March, I was buying Tyler Hero, a lot of him, um, some Duncan Robinson. I kind of knew the Heat were going to you know, have a big playoff run. So I bought a lot of Heat players. I was buying mostly on Facebook at this time. Um, but these are some of my eBay buys. These are basically cards I couldn't find on Facebook. So... Like Kawhi Leonard was one guy stacked up on. Jimmy Butler. As you guys can see, the tr trend of the Heat players are definitely there. Um, and I definitely bought a lot of Heat players. I recommended my members to buy a bunch of Heat players um, back then. And sure enough, they made the finals. So we were right on that pick. Um, but these Luka Doncic's, this cost me quite a lot of money. Um, which is definitely, you know, something I would say I regret. But, you know, I did, you know, obviously reinvest that. So I'm not going to complain too much. But our third mistake are, you know, buying hoops rookies. Um, at one point, you know, Prism was very expensive, and I thought, you know, I would go ahead and buy Luka Doncic and other players' hoops rookie cards instead. Um, and I did make money with that, but, you know, one big thing is, first of all, when you're buying cards that are not too desired, um, you know, a Prism's very desired, an Optic is very desired, even Select is quite desired, but hoops is just not desired, which makes it very hard to sell the card. Um, so I remember I bought these, and they were going for around 500 bucks. You know, a few months after I bought them for around 300, they're going for 500, and I tried to sell them. Um, I posted them in quite a few places, and none of it sold. Um, these cards were not selling, um, and so I had no choice to but to hold on to them. Um, and when I held on to them, you know, the prices went down, as you guys know, after, you know, obviously NBA offseason hit when players start to get knocked out of the playoffs, prices went down and currently they're around 350 to 360 dollars. So, you know, if that was a prism or optic, I would have easily been able to sell that in, you know, 30 seconds. I post that on five Facebook groups and I get 10 people wanting to buy it. Um, but no one really wants hoops. Um, you know, that's the truth that the truth right so you know at some point you know you got to buy cards that are desired and that's a lesson that I really learned um you know to stick with you know prism optic select um and more so known brands that people always want to buy because one they're much easier to flip um but two you know they're just they go up a lot faster too in price you know that Luca went from 300 to 500 in the same time that his um, Prism went from 700 to 2,000. Um, so the Prism nearly tripled, and the hoops did not even double in price. So that was definitely a mistake. If I'd spent all that money on Prism, that would have been a lot better. Um, but without further ado, we're going to hop right into our next mistake, which is buying a bunch of young players and betting on them. Um, in 2017-18, I was buying a lot of Lonzo Ball, other guys like that who, you know, quite honestly, were very big bets to place. Um, and back then, around three years ago, I didn't really realize, 
you know, that not, you know, there's not going to be many players that actually end up, you know, when Zion, for example, right now, you know, he has to be very, very good to prove, you know, and stay at a $600 PSA 10 price. You know, at, at, at some point, he hasn't proven much in the NBA yet. Um, he's played maybe 20 games. He's had two or three injuries. Um, you know, he's played hardly any minutes in the games he's played. Um, I don't think he's had one game where he's played like 30 minutes, um, which is not the best. I just really think if you guys stick to more so guys like Kevin Durant, you know, Steph Curry right now, who, you know, obviously coming back from an injury, but they've already proven so much in the league. Um, you know, it's a lot better off because these Lonzo balls, you know, the market was not even hot in 2017, but these Lonzos were going for so much because of the hype. Um, you know, everyone was so hyped up about Lonzo as they are for Zion right now, as they probably will be for LaMelo Ball. Um, and it's just something to think about. It's definitely fun to place a bet and root for a player. But in terms of an investment, um, I would not recommend just going ahead and throwing money at young players who haven't really proven anything in the NBA because there's a huge difference from college and the NBA. A lot of players can be very, very good in college, but in the NBA, they, the game doesn't translate, right? And that was Lonzo Ball. He was spectacular at UCLA. I was like, wow, he's a beast. He's going to be very good in the NBA. Um, but it just turns out that a lot of players' games don't translate. Um, so, not going to lie, he still has a lot of potential. He could eventually find his way in the NBA. But, you know, it's definitely a big risk to place. And people need to understand that when buying cards like that. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we're going to hop right into our next, which is buying a lot of, you know, newly released cards. Um, for example, actually right now, um, Contenders. Um, so Contenders 2020 Basketball. Um, for example, LaMelo Ball is one guy right now, right? Um, as soon as a... Uh, um, as soon as the product releases, prices are super inflated. Um, I remember at one point, you know, Zion draft picks cards were going for like 300 bucks. Now they're like less than 30 bucks. Um, and the reason is when normal prism drops. So right now, contenders is very expensive, right? For Lamelo Ball, this contenders autograph is you know 700 bucks, whatever it is. Um, but as soon as prism drops, as soon as optic drops. You know, this card's going to tank in price. It's no longer going to be 700 bucks. It's going to be more like 200 um, or even less. So you definitely don't want to buy a card as soon as the product releases. Um, a lot of people, is, including me, um, made this mistake when buying 2019-20 Chronicles Basketball. Um, at one point, you know, this card was, you know, Ke Kevin Durant was going for 50 to 80 bucks. Um, and currently they're around 10 to 20 bucks, um, maybe 30 bucks max, but you know, at some point, you got to wait until enough people open up the packs because what happens is when a box releases, there's not much supply because not many people have bought have opened the boxes and posted the cards for sale. Um, yet, as people continue to open the boxes and post the cards for sale that they pull from the boxes, um, you know, prices start to decrease. And so you definitely want to wait at least a good two months um, for people to open packs after, uh, you know, even mo probably more than two months. I'd wait at least three to four months after, you know, a a box releases because especially when the new prism drops I'm sure LaMelo Ball is going to come out at like a hundred bucks um, for a raw prism but it's going to very it's going to settle as more people you know open up the packs and get the cards and post them for sale the supply goes up the price goes down so you definitely want to wait and give it a fair amount of time um, until you start buying a newly released product um, but I really hope you guys learned something from this video once again if you guys would like to join the membership program and make a killing with us click the link down below to sportscardsinvest.com thank you guys so much for all the support thank you guys for tuning in let me know if you guys like this kind of style of a video it's more of like a raw video just talking about my mistakes um because we all you know have mistakes along with our you know obviously profits but overall it's been a very good last seven months really thankful for exactly you know what the market has done overall it's been very hot very good um and it's just a little dip right now we really got to put things in perspective um, when people really talk about, oh my gosh, the market's tanking, you know, if you look at a one year graph, you know, of prices last year to prices now, you know, prices are super high still. 
Every single, you know, there's going to be off-season cycles where prices go down. But overall, you know, we got to be thankful for this last full year of sports card craziness. Um, and yeah, can't wait for what the future has in the hobby. But thank you guys so much for watching. Without further ado, we're going to close out the video. Other than that, I'm out. Peace.